And hey, welcome back to CG Bros. In this video tutorial, we're going to take a look at how to make a down and dirty pirate's flag, uh, complete with its flapping tatters, using Maya 2011 and the Uncloth module. Now, typically, most people uh, will go ahead and grab an image like this, and this is a pretty nice little image. Uh, but they'll map this onto a polyplane and then animate that polyplane. The problem with that is, is these little tatters don't really uh, dynamically simulate on their own, and it's very obvious. And this type of setup is used best for background material. Uh, and these days, for anything foreground or midground, you need to do something a little more sophisticated. So that's what we're going to do today. So let's go ahead and get started on this. Let's go ahead and create a polygon plane on our grid. Lay it out here, and go ahead and let's size that at 20 and 15. And we'll do a subdivide of 20 on each of these. And that'll give us a little room to uh, reshape our mesh and give it a little more uh, shape that we're after here for the tatteredness. Now we might go about doing that in several ways. I'm going to go ahead and grab a few faces here. And I'm just going to start deleting them to kind of give it a little, uh, you know, tattered look, a little weathered look because it's been in battle and uh, had bullets shot through it. So uh, this is how I might go about doing that. You know, once you have a, a shape that you like, and this is by no means a modeling tutorial, um, but this is just one way you might go about uh, doing that. So you could re reshape these by moving some of these vertices around and really uh, refining your your flag. Uh, so I've gone ahead and done that, and I'll show you that now. Now this took me about uh, 15 minutes to uh, flesh out a bit, and uh, it's not bad, but ultimately this might be used as a uh, wrap deformer on a high resolution. Uh, mesh uh, that has a lot more detail in it. Uh, ideally, you'll want to simulate on a lower resolution mesh like this and then wrap to form that on your higher resolution mesh. Okay, so let's go ahead and convert this object to um, end cloth. Let's select the object and under the end dynamics menu, let's select end mesh, create end cloth. Now, when I'm creating end cloth objects such as clothing or flags or anything of that nature that has a lot of dynamic motion in it, I find working with the presets is a great place to start. Let's go ahead and select the object, go to Presets here, down to T-Shirt, and hit Replace. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like. Okay, it's hooked up to the simulator, but it's really hard to see what the dynamic motion of the flag is going to be. You know, what I've done here is I've modeled a pole, and I'd like this flag to fly from the pole. Uh, so the way we do that is to create an end constraint. And what we do is on our end cloth object, we select the vertices that we'd like to constrain, and I'm going to constrain these leftermost vertices here. We go up to End Constraint and hit Transform. And that places a little transform constraint at the center of the vertices that we selected. It's going to affect the whole edge here, but that's the representative locator. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like. We can see that the constraint is, constraint is functioning fine. Uh, it's doing what we expect it to do. That's good. So let's go ahead and adjust some of the parameters here on our end cloth object. Let's go ahead and open up the Attribute Editor. Let's select the end cloth object and check out some of the attributes here. Now I see that self collide is set to on, and that's what we want. I am going to reduce this friction value from 0.3 down to 0.1 to be sure that these tatters slide across each other easily and don't get bound up on each other. I'm also going to increase the stretch resistance from 35 to 40 just to introduce a little more firmness into the cloth. Let's go over to the nucleus node and add some wind. Here's the wind speed node. Now we could uh, adjust the slider and get any value we want, but this is going to be a constant over time. What I'd like to do is have a varying wind speed over time. So I'm going to go ahead and right click here and add an expression. Let's create a new expression. Let's copy and paste the attribute name into our expression window here. Let's go ahead and assign it a random value between 14 and 22. Let's see what that gives us. So we can see our expression by that turning uh, wind speed value turning purple. Let's go ahead and see what we've got. Now that's pretty nice. We've got some really nice deformation here on the cloth. But you can see it's rather slow uh, and it's not reacting quite the way we we're looking uh, for here. So let's go ahead and uh, look at the attributes again. It looks like that's getting damped a little too much. So let's just go ahead and check that. 
Okay, here's the dampness setting. It's set to 0.8, and that's pretty high. Let's go ahead and set that down to 0 0.01. Let's take another look. Oh yeah, there we go. There's some tattering action there. That's what that's what I'm going for here. There's some nice loose tatters. Uh, also, even look in the holes here on the pirate flag. Even the little uh, tears here on the holes are flapping around. That's some pretty sophisticated animation uh, as far as the flag is concerned. So that's looking pretty nice. On the surface of it, it looks like a pretty good cloth animation. But here it's the CG Bros. We like to take things to the next level. What I'm noticing here is a regular frequency moving through this cloth sim here. Uh, and what I would like to do is break that up with another level of turbulence. That really would add uh, quite a bit of sophistication to the cloth simulation. Let's do that now. Let's select our object, go up to fields, and I'm going to create a volume axis field. And I'm going to scale it up to 25 by 25 by 25. And that should completely envelop my cloth object, which it does. I'm going to move this more towards the uh, origin of my cloth object here. And I'm going to position it just in the middle there. Now I like to use the volume axis field for several reasons. Uh, one of them is uh, it's got a very nice procedural uniform uh, turbulence uh, effect. And so it's got other attributes as well that are built in that I always like to use in conjunction with the turbulence. But this time I'm just going to use the turbulence with just a little bit away from center here, set at 0.5. Um, the uh, turbulence, I'm going to set that to a value of 2. I'm going to kick this turbulence speed up to 1 uh, and add a little bit of detailed turbulence. 0.25 should work for that. Uh, let's go ahead and reduce this magnitude to a value of 2. Yeah, okay. Let's go ahead and see what we've got. Now that's looking pretty good. And you can notice that that regular uh, pattern of turbulence that we were seeing earlier has been broken up by the second layer of turbulence in there and it looks a lot less uh, uniform and much more randomized for a much more natural look. I'd also like to uh, increase this turbulence offset. I'd like to actually animate that uh, over time. So why don't we go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and right click and create a new expression on this attribute. Let's go ahead and copy the name and paste it down here into the expression editor followed by an equal sign. Let's go ahead and paste it again followed by an equal sign paste it again, followed by another equal sign. With this middle variable here, let's go ahead and take this x value and change it to y. And at the last variable here, let's go ahead and change that x value to a z. And that way we're covered in all three axes. Now let's set this value to uh, equal time on a per frame basis. Let's hit create. The last thing I'd like to do is uh, take a look at this thing. I think we're almost there. Okay, now we're getting some fantastic motion in this. This is really what I was hoping to achieve here with uh, adjusting these turbulence fields. It's a really nice random motion with some really uh, nice tattering action going here on the end. But what I am noticing is it's still a little bit slow, and it's a little bit wild. So I'm going to calm that down a little bit. And I have a little special trick up my sleeve. It's on the Nucleus node here, and it's called Scale Attributes. I'm going to go ahead and use the Space Scale Attribute, change it from 1 0.5. That will increase the speed uh, as well as give it a more real-time feel. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. There we go. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, show the textures. I went ahead and grabbed this uh, texture from freewallpaper4.me and I'm going to go ahead and unhide my flagpole. Let's go ahead and make a quick uh, preview of this. Okay, let's take a look. That's pretty nice. After that initial settling, we've got a pretty high resolution, uh, high dynamic motion pirate flag here. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you can come back to see us for the next one. This is Bill for CG Bros. Signing off.